Hola! Hola! <laughs> We're here um, in our very first interview with um, our so socios, the people who've who subscribe to uh, the SES Tokyo program in Light Speak Spanish. And we're here with Mel Harms. Hello, Mel. Hi, how are you doing? Doing really well. Thank you very much, Mel, for, for doing this interview. I, you're the very first person to do it. And I understand it must be quite nerve wracking to do this, especially, you know, if you're going to chant your arm and speak Spanish as well. Well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Mel, just some questions. Tell us a little bit about yourself. What, what do you do? Where do you live? Okay, um, I'm a trainer, so I train um, managers in how to manage and salespeople in how to sell and teams um, in how to, how to work together as a team and overcome you know, interpersonal difficulties or, or issues. Um, I live in Marlow, which is a, a small town uh, on, the, on the River Thames, just outside or halfway between Windsor uh, and Reading. Uh, yeah, just outside London. And how are you coping with the snow? Everybody seems to be snowed in. Well, being a soft southerner, <laughs> as, as you know the difference between the soft southerner and not. Um, we're all we're all struggling because we've got about, as you can see, um, about um, oh four centimeters of snow, four or five centimeters of snow. So it, it's not so bad. Um, I think other parts of the country have got it worse. Um, but of course, the media is playing it up, and you would think there's. Um, there's an arctic drive going through the country the way that the media is going on so it, it sounds a lot worse than it is yes, for sure yeah the, the media it doesn't matter whether if it's hot or cold it's a killer killer cold yeah. killer heat everything always kills it? yeah. it's, it's called the beast from the east apparently this storm <laughs> okay excellent well um mel uh, let me ask you a couple more questions and then if it's okay with you i'll, I'll ask you some questions in spanish as well so how did you find Lightspeed Spanish? How did you come across it? Uh, by accident. I was, I was um, searching on YouTube and I was, um, I was watching some, um, some videos. It was like a, a Spanish version of Friends, but for simpletons. Um, so it was fine for me, um, especially at my level of Spanish. And on one of the, the next videos came up with, was you, you and Cynthia. And it must have been one of your, your first videos or one of the old ones. Uh, and I just liked the style. And I thought, oh, I'll find out a bit more about that. Um, and then I sort of looked at your website and, and signed up. So that was probably about um, just over a year ago now, 13, 13 14 months. And before you uh, signed up for the uh, Socio uh, subscription, how long had you been learning Spanish beforehand? Well, oh, probably, I, I'm ashamed to say this, especially when you hear my Spanish. Um, I've been having lessons for three years. Um, in fact, this this January, three years. But there, you know, I have a private lesson. You know, maybe once a week if I if I'm you know not working um, too much. Uh, maybe a group lesson. You know, once every once every two weeks or so. So I've been learning for three years. Um, and I've got the basic foundations of everything, but so I've been going for private lessons, been going for um, group lessons, been reading some books and listening to the radio. Um, but unfortunately, unless you get to speak it all the time, as you will see later on, it, 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 all that studying is for, is for very little. Sure. I mean, what's it, what I find very interesting is that that we tend to spend a lot of time working in the areas that we tend not to use as much. You know, we speak 99% of the time, and yet when we're learning Spanish, we tend that's the, the kind of one of the last skills that we get. You know, we don't yeah. have the opportunity. Obviously, you, you know, if you're living in London you and you're working in the type of work you work, it's not always easy just to have a conversation every day with somebody yeah. in Spanish. You know, but it's kind of the key, really, isn't it? It, it, it is. It's a, it's a treat when you actually get to, you know, someone says, oh, they're from Spain or they're from South America. Uh, and then all of a sudden you get this rush of embarrassment. Oh no, I don't want to speak Spanish. And they're all watching and listening. Oh, what do I say? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and of course you, um, you get nervous as well because it, it doesn't yeah. happen that often. You get nervous and then normally your Spanish goes out the window when you're nervous as well, you know. You go, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Absolutely. well talking about Spanish, why don't we, why don't I ask you some questions in Spanish, okay? Um, again, just more on the theme of uh, your learning system, yeah. 
Entonces, Mel, ¿por qué aprendes español? ¿Por qué? Uh, es uh, una pregunta uh, muy interesante. Um, para mí uh, es para trabajar. Um, um, el primer razón es uh, para trabajar. Quiero um, uh, um, hacer um, o hago quiero quiero, no, quiero hacer um, cursos uh, en español uh, últimamente últimamente um, um, para vendedores y para los jefes de empresas y los equipos um, de las empresas. Um, y, pero ahora es, es más, para mí es más um, por, por interés, uh, mi, interés, mi, mi, interés, mi interés, y, y también um, uh, disfruto um, uh, aprender español. Sí, más o menos. Mel, ¿te gustaría eh, dar cursos en España o en América Latina? ¿Qué prefieres? Um, probablemente uh, en América Latina, um, porque um, uh, uh, yo, yo tengo contratas, contra, contratas, uh, contratos con empresas en um, América Latina o Sudamérica. Um, pero uh, voy, a, voy a ir a, a Mallorca para tres meses uh, en abril para, para vivir por tres meses. Um, entonces, um, quiero, uh, quiero hacer cosas en, en España también. ¿Por qué no? Perfecto. ¿Por qué no? Sí. Vale. Y, y eh, Mel, ¿en cuál...? Durante tus estudios, ¿cuál es la cosa más, como más eh, difícil? <risa> um, para mí, <risa> la cosa más difícil es cuando um, la gente um, habla o habla. Um, sí, sí, porque en, um, cuando, uh, cuando uh, aprendo, Um, uh, o cuando um, uh, yo hablo con mi, mi profesora o, o um, uh, otro, um, uh, otro estudiante, estudiante um, hablan más lentamente y, y claro. Pero la gente normal en, en la calle o en el supermercado son, <ríe> hablan muy muy rápido y no 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 tan claro no tan claro eh, para mí para, para otros españoles probablemente es claro para mí no es muy claro es, es eso es más difícil para mí vale vale Entonces, escuchar el español hablado como normal el, el español de la calle sí es normal, sí, sí. eso es normal. Y los españoles dicen que los ingleses hablamos rápidamente también. Sí, así parece, ¿no? Y, y sí. Mel, eh, para ti, ¿cuál, ¿cuál ha sido la cosa más fácil de aprender español? Um, ah, sí. Uh, yo, yo encuentro um, uh, más fácil, la cosa más fácil... Para mí es um, uh, leyendo. ¿Lo, lo leyendo, leyendo, reading, leyendo, leyendo. Sí, es leer. Um, leer. Um, yo le, leo um, uh, um, li, libros más, um, más pequeños um, y los, uh, los niveles, no sé, el, el nivel probablemente de uno o a, a dos, um, pero um, de, de, los um, palabras son uh, fácil o simple, um, no largo um, y en el presente, en futuro y en um, preferido, Most, um, mejor. Um, 
Sí, por eso, por eso para mí um, leer um, simples libros es más fácil. Um, pero ahora también um, uh, um, veo, veo um, películas um, en Netflix o um, Amazon Prime uh, y con, con um, españoles, películas españoles con um, subtítulos, subtítulos españoles también. Entonces, veo y leo, veo y leo y escucho, es, es más, para mí es mejor, para mí es mejor. Sí, sí, es, es un sistema muy bueno, en mi opinión, escuchar y leer a la vez. Y, y así tu mente puede capturar la idea, ¿no? Y los sonidos sí. y las palabras, sí. Sí, también um, veo um, uh, las dos acciones, también, los acciones de, de, de también, es, um, eh, sí, sí, <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, sé, no, sé, I'm not sure what's happening with our connection, but it seems to be very poor at the moment, I don't know why, it was great and now it's gone poor. Um, okay, Mel. Y, uh, I think, well, we've covered all, we've covered all the questions in Spanish. Well done. Your Spanish is good. I don't know why you, you run yourself down with your Spanish. You, you, you communicated perfectly well and I've understood everything that you said. So well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's just quite nerve wracking because you don't do it all the time. You know, I'm, you've, you've written about it in some of your books, I've read. Um, um, the, you know, the, the first time you have to say something to someone in Spanish, you go, ah, God, blimey, what am I doing? <laughs> I feel like I'm writing up to you. <laughs> yeah, because, again, I mean, you're a very accomplished person, you're a trainer. Communication is vitally important in training, isn't it? Absolutely. And so when yeah. you start to speak another language and, you, and you're not speaking at that level that you're accustomed to, it's kind of, it's a bit of a blow, really, isn't it? What's interesting, I was running a training course a little while ago, and there was a Spanish guy on the table at lunch. And of course, I'm standing up in front of some like 50 or 60 people running you know, training sessions for them. And um, all of a sudden, this guy said, oh, they, when they found I was learning Spanish, started speaking to me in Spanish, and I responded. And the guy said, now you see the real male, because when you're up there doing, doing the teaching, you look so confident. And now I'm hearing you mumble, and I'm hearing you pause, and I'm gonna, and then you sound like the rest of us. It's great. So yeah, it's a great level of learning a new language. <laughs> okay, Matt. So um, that that's brilliant. Thank you very much for the uh, for the interview. I'm sorry that the quality's dropped a little bit toward the end. Mel, can you leave us with one top tip? What would you if if you were talking to a beginner or some an intermediate person who wanted to improve the Spanish? What would you tell them to do? One. I would say just try. Don't be embarrassed. If you if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. And I know that. I feel I feel very embarrassed when I get it wrong. But I will still try. So you just got to overcome your embarrassment or your fear of of not being correct because they some they will correct you or they will understand you and make. You know, you know, make allowances as we do with with people who are learning English, and and don't forget that it, it's never. Too, I'm 57. I started learning two and a half, three years ago. It's never too late. Um, so we're never too old, never too young. It's just have fun with it because it's a you know, it's a, it's a great experience and it's a great um, life skill to have. Excellent. That's really good advice. Yeah, brilliant. You, it's, you, you, Everything you said, I'm completely in agreement with. Have fun with it. Have fun. It's not life-threatening, is it? You know, make a few mistakes. Why not? Why not? It's a good learning process, isn't it? Okay, Mel. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your time, and thank you for 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 risking it and speaking in Spanish uh, in front of all of these thirty thousand people that are going to watch this video. I believe you. Great for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, and it's great to talk to you. Equally, thank you very much.